Hello and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Speed J Benator uh, 3 channel for another episode of my Formula 1 22, my team J for Career Mode in episode number 79 and we're racing at the uh, Hungarian Grand Prix. Well, it's been a week ago since I did my mini vacation uh, at Texas Motor Speedway so if you did miss the, uh, the previous race, it was the Austrian Grand, Austria Grand Prix. Uh, it was a long episode uh, with the sprint race uh, going on. Be sure to check it out on my uh, it will still be on my live streaming on twitch.tv slash speedjapenator. Click on the purple heart down below, and then also subscribe to my channel down below in the star button to subscribe to live streaming on twitch.tv slash speedjapenator. Then also you can check on the, uh, click on the uh, red bell to your right and subscribe to my channel on youtube.com slash speedjapenator3. That's youtube.com slash speedjapenator3, YouTube handles at speedjapenator3, and click those thumbs up and then link and subscribe and donate to my channel and then join in for youtube.com slash at speed jaconator3 well it's been a week uh, since we did a formula one episode but uh, i have a few announcements uh, to, to make i will be doing the game preview of uh, the moto gp uh, 23 game you know i haven't done moto gp in the past uh, six months because uh I thought maybe I was going to cancel that, but I am now, uh, I'm going to reacquire, uh, to reunite back uh, with the two-wheel uh, motorcycle racing, and it will start uh, next week. It will start uh, on Monday. I will be starting back uh, the Moto2, but starting in MotoGP23, because remember, that game will come out in June, in June 8th, instead of uh, late April. I will be reacquiring that game because I have officially canceled uh, NASCAR gaming. I will not be doing any more uh, NASCAR gaming due to the fact that Motorsports Games has been a very atrocious uh, this season. So until further notice, there will be no more uh, NASCAR gaming. And due to the fact that IndyCar delayed their uh, uh, gaming launch uh, until next year. I will still maybe do Forza and everything, but well, we will see if I will still decide to do uh, MotoGP. But I made my announcement that next week that on Monday I will start going back to uh, finishing off uh, the MotoGP 22 game and I will only do one season of the Pro MotoGP 22 driving for the, uh, the Repsol Honda uh, racing team that Mark Marquez uh, rides uh, with the bike. But it's going to take me a while to uh, get back to my experience with the controller uh, with the MotoGP uh, 22. So I'll try to take a lot of practice and everything and then try to uh, get re-experience again to, for racing these bikes. And hopefully in MotoGP 23, maybe the AL setting will be uh, a little bit more right as well too. And hopefully uh, I don't get too many blisters on my fingers and everything else uh, while doing that game. And I really miss the, uh, the, the two-wheeler so much and I could have stayed with it in the first place if NASCAR gaming wasn't uh, so lousy and so worse. But but the MotoGP is uh, really uh, good and everything, and I will uh, delete the, uh, the NASCAR t uh, 21, uh, NASCAR 22 uh, game, erase that one, and I will still keep the NASCAR heat because I still need that for my Twitch.tv uh, coverage uh, for NASCAR, uh, for my real-life NASCAR racing, because they're going to be uh, racing uh, this weekend at the Bristol Dirt Race. But it's still uh, still worse than usual and everything, so that's why I couldn't do a career mode or a race now mode on it. But um, because they have huge problems with that game and everything else, and that's why not many people are not playing it anymore because they're playing the only past uh, NASCAR games. But if they come out with a pure simple game in NASCAR 23, then we will reacquire and reunite with them. And then hopefully well, everything will go back to normal again if Motorsports Gamings get their uh, get their time up and then get, try to uh, reassess uh, all their uh, businesses and everything else. But if it doesn't work out, then they have to go to maybe a, a different gaming format. So that will be my announcement. And I will do the game preview right before I go back to the MotoGP. But when I do MotoGP 23, Moto3 and Moto2 are going to be moved into the Facebook Live and Twitch.tv channel, while I'll only do Pro MotoGP on the, uh, on the YouTube and the uh, Twitch.tv channel. I will go straight to the Mo Pro MotoGP, and Moto3 3 and Moto2 will be moved on to the championship uh, mode for one season. And then I'll also do Moto E as well for one of each season for all those series on the championship season mode while Pro Moto GP will be on the career mode starting June 8th. 
All right, we're getting ready and set to go here at the Hungary. We have done much better in practice uh, in this struggling track at the Hungarian ring. I've been uh, in the top five for throughout the practice one, session one and two and three. And hopefully maybe I'll have a shot at maybe getting into the front row or maybe pole position. And Felipe Dragovic has done a, a tremendous job here. And we're trying to see if we can try to end the streak away from the land. Lena Norris's McLaren team because they have been a, on a hot streak so far and they're edging us in into the point standings. They have 177 points and, and Lando Norris is really uh, charging on. And, and they have been the most surprised Formula One team uh, this season and they're really uh, creeping in our, our backs. But uh, we still have a commanding lead in the constructor standings and me and Felipe Dragovic are even it out right now, but let's see if we can try to beat the McLarens. Uh, this time here in Hungary. Let's get ready for qualification for episode number 79 of the Hungary Grand Prix. qualify right now, but I don't want to be wasting my tires up. Finishing up on Moto 2. I'm gonna have to see uh, which career mode is that because um, it's been about five months since I've done it. And so that will give me two months to, to spare because now that the new Moto 2 D23 game is coming in June 8th, I still don't have the pre order yet, but I will be buying it. Because it is going to be a replacement uh, because the IndyCar uh, series game apparently did not come out and it will be delayed for next year. Alexander Alvin is on his qualification in this Williams. It's a nice piece of passing, but I have to take another lap at it because uh, Alexander Alvin ruined my run. That is not a good lap. That's a 1 minute 17.884.
Well, that was not bad. It's a minute 17.069, but is it fast enough? I did get it up there in the second lap, but uh, I turned a little bit uh, too loose uh, coming into that turn. I think everybody else is going to get a minute 16 as well. Let's see where it's going to drop us. Well, not bad. We're in P5. And uh, we're a little bit improved uh, into the pace there. About seven car lengths off the pace. A minute 17.069. But it's not too bad. But uh, Lando Norris is still the fastest. And man, Vargovic just gets eating the lights uh, out of all of us. Uh, and Lando Norris is still the fastest. And then uh, Esteban Ocon is in P3. While I'm down into P5. But hey, I'm way better than Max Verstappen, which is a good thing. Well, let's see if we can try to get it fast enough in the, uh, in the next practice session. That's not too bad. Then 16.416. P3. And that was the best lap I ever had there because we had a minute 17 earlier, but now it's a minute 16. Point 416. We did carry it up a little bit. I really like that lap. That is solid. That's going to move us up in the third qualifying session, hopefully. Yeah, it dropped us up a little bit. I think we're down into P4, so th that's okay. That a minute 16 was solid. Yeah, that puts us down into P4, and Felipe Drogovic is now better. Man, one car, one thousandth of a second faster than uh, Lando Norris. Minute 16.109 on a minute 16.416. That was a much, much better qualifying. It was a, if it was a minute 17, I would have, would have been down on the order. Great qualifying in the second session. Let's try to move up there. Maybe we could try to get a front row start. So we'll try to maybe do two laps of this.
Hopefully Formula 123, uh, they'll fix everything on the AL. Because it needs to be. Because it was messed up uh, just a little bit. This is truly a thing, the, uh, the best improvement in qualifying here at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Not bad, it's for minute 16.386. I am completely a lot faster. I am a lot more faster coming off of that turn. Come on, give me good lines here, good handling. Man, that was not bad. That was a minute and 6.103. That is the fastest lap in the final practice session, and it puts us into P3. Yeah, definitely going to be on a mission. We're going to be right near Lando Norris. I hope it sticks. Is it going to be a stick to P3? And it is. We are going to start in P3. That is the first time in a long while that I have started in this position in the Hungarian Grand Prix. And Lando Norris once again grabs the pole. We're only about five car lengths uh, off the pace over Lando Norris. And we can try to beat him off uh, during the race. So McLaren's are first and fourth, and we are second and third. That was a, a great, great qualifying. But Lando Norris already used his uh, tires. So he is going to be slow. Good job for Max Verstappen. He was in P5. Everybody else uh, was well down on the order. Man, I am very happy about what I have accomplished here in the Hungarian Grand Prix. And that's the first time in a long while that I have been into the uh, third and final qualifying session here at the Hungarian Grand Prix, starting in P3. That is the highest position that I had in a long while in, in Hungary. That, that is perhaps one of my best ever qualifying effort here at the Hungarian ring. I used to start like in worse position, but now 
Look at this. This season, P3. And we're on our way to win it. We haven't won the Hungarian Grand Prix yet, but I would like to win it just once. And to make this a very a special, uh, influential race. So a great qualifying it was uh, at the Hungarian ring. But uh, it will be mostly just partly cloudy skies here at the Hungarian ring for the Hungary Grand Prix. But hopefully I can make it into the first quarter uh, without any uh, problems. And hopefully it will be a truly a magnificent race. What is going to happen in episode number 79? And I told you last season I'll, I'm going to fight back and do well here in the Hungary Grand Prix. And I'm already off to a good start. So here we go. Let's hope I can have a perfect race too. I've had perfect races in the past. I did have one last uh, season, but I was uh, standing around in fourth place. But third place, uh, but starting at P3, will definitely make it very special. Can we win here at the Hungarian ring? And no rain to worry about or anything. Let's have a great performance. Let's have the best Hungarian Grand Prix in season four of my team, j Career Mode. And let's get going. We have about nine more races left to go in the end of season four. Let's uh, pack it up. Bofanga Sam, the Hungarian Grand Prix. starting position ever here at the uh, Hungary Grand Prix in a very long while. I have not started the, the, my best start here in the Hungarian ring. I, I was uh, completely surprised that I made it all the way through uh, three qualifying sessions. Now we're going to take a look at what the uh, strategy is going to be. I think we're going to stay on the medium tires because if we stay on there long enough because uh, we have Daniel Ricciardo and Verstappen right behind us and then a, a ferocious pull of cars from 6 all the way down to 13 that have taken uh, soft tires. And then we have a few others that are taking medium tires and everything, so I think we're, uh, our best bet is uh, to, to stay on these tires. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I think uh, we're going to go with this uh, kind of style. We're going to go 19 laps. Uh, on these tires and if my teammate does pit then we can go with another set of medium tires 
maybe, um, well, maybe 20 laps we can stay out there. But if we stay out there long enough, then we'll be able to put those soft tires on for the final 12 laps of the race. And if we uh, use our strategy pretty well and uh, stay in the, in the top three position, we'll be able to do pretty well in this race. All right, our best starting spot in a long while here at the Hungarian ring. Can we try to win it? Can we try to beat uh, Lando Norris's win streak? He's already had two wins in a row under his belt. And the Team J-Botronics so, so far have not won anything since uh, the since the Azerbaijan, since the Canadian Grand Prix. That was our best start. And then uh, and after that, the McLarens have just been on fire so far. But let's see if we can try to dethrone the McLarens here at the Hungarian Ring, the Hungary Grand Prix, episode number 79. Let's get ready to roll away for the formation. And me and my teammate Felipe Dragovic in our nice, beautiful library cars. Well, the next library car, we're going to go with the Easter library car, which is going to be a, maybe a light aqua blue uh, kind of a color for the next uh, race, episode number 80, when we go to the uh, longest race circuit in Formula One, the Spa Frankelchamp Belgium Grand Prix. And this is also our second time that we're using the increased downforce setup. And that's why I am so fast here. Because I use the increased downforce setup instead of the uh, balanced default setup. And the top five rows, uh, and the top five cars have medium tires. And we can stay on there as long as we want. See if we can work together as a team there, but Felipe Gregovich, you're having a good season so far, but Lando Norris is creeping right at us. And they have been doing a, a tremendous job, winning already two races so far for the McLarens. We do make incredible parking here. All the grids are, uh, all the cars are going into their grids and getting ready for a truthful, truthful, grateful race here at the Hungarian ring. The five red lights are coming on. And we are underway here at the Hungarian ring and I get a beautiful start. And also a beautiful start for Felipe Drogovic as well. And I pass both of them and I take the early lead. And you know how difficult it is to pass here at the uh, Hungarian ring. That was, a, the, the, that was the most terrific start I have ever had here. It was three wide coming off of the first corner. I didn't make contact with anybody. And I take over the lead, but it's going to be hard for Dragovic, uh, for hard for everybody else, uh, because it is so difficult to pass here. And why did Lando Norris have to make the pass right there? And he broke loose a little bit, and now uh, he bangs up with some of the others. Now some of the others have been taken uh, soft tires. And now George Russell, uh, he took advantage of that uh, lap, and he goes into fourth place. And Dragovic is doing a great job of giving dirty air out of uh, Lando Norris.
I'm about eight car lengths now uh, ahead of uh, Lando Norris. Looked a little bit coming out of that turn, and then that gave Lando Norris the advantage. I'm very glad I'm not in back of that pack and everything because they are the, have the soft tires. Lando Norris gets another fast lap. We have 220.338. We're pretty much even Steven with our speeds right now. But one thing about it, the question is, we need to make some good pit stops. First time this season I have taken the lead here at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Oh, and Felipe Drogovic now got the fastest. The top three right now are, are the fastest cars. And I really love I really love every minute of this increased downforce setup with these sort of brand new generation cars this season. And it's our first season running them. I wonder how the uh, I wonder how the second year is going to be with the Formula 123 cars. Remember, Story Mode will be coming back. We'll be doing both of them simultaneously at the same time when Formula 123 comes out. Hope the interviews come back too. You know, the McLarens may not be competitive in the start of the season uh, because it's going to be the Red Bulls that are going to be competitive and, and look out for Fernando Alonso. He is going to be good and it's been a fabulous start so far. Oh my goodness, and Lando Norris broke loose a little bit. You saw he broke loose a little bit coming out of that turn and, and now he loses ground and now my teammate Felipe Grugovic is knocking the door. Must be that dirty air that's coming through uh, behind Felipe Dragovic and
George Russell is currently running in fourth place right now. Oh, Lando Norris has cracked in a minute 19. Oh man, here he comes. He is coming. I will be able to do this setup again that when I go to that Singapore Grand Prix, all the other Grand Prix are going to be great. If we uh, race competitive like this with Randall Norris and our teammate uh, Felipe Drogovic, we'll be able to carry away with a good win. We're already after eight of 70 laps. We're still trying to hold on to this lead over, uh, over Lando Norris. My teammate Drogovic is still third place. He still uh, has a contention, but here comes uh, George Russell. He has those media, I mean, the, soft tires, but they're going to wear out too easily. We're not expecting to make that good, stupid pass again. I'm 
that's for everyone else. But, the, but that's where my weakest set is, is, is the S's. Uh, I don't seem to know why I'm slowing down there. Those tires are beginning to wear out on those socks. You know, they put, put a lot of abrasions uh, at the Hungarian Grand Prix with those uh, soft tires. They just don't do any good. And then I'll notice it's still creeping up on my nose right now. Trying to let me break loose a little bit. And we're, gonna, we're only for three cars that are now the fastest out there. Because fourth place, George Russell, is now in the pits. Yeah, he goes and makes a pit stop because he uh, they're, they're put on those, uh, those soft tires. He may be the leader of the race uh, when we go back uh, into formation. Oh no! Oh, that was a good, totally uncalled for. Man, the, 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 man, he ruined my perfect race, and George Russell that it makes a unavoidable contact. So that was unsportsmanlike contact with uh, me and uh, Lando Norris. Yeah, why did he have to go and do that? Totally uncalled for. Lando Norris was making the pass and everything, and then he had to go and spin me out. That was such a bad move that Lando Norris made. He was making the pass around there. That was, that was a bad spot to be passing. And then spins me out.
No, you're not going to do that move again like you did the last time. Man, he is really breaking me loose. out of the race. It could be our first retirement of the Hungary Grand Prix or maybe it was just letting him go. We're at the 16 to 70 laps. Uh, hopefully we don't make any more uh, unexpected and unavoidable contact with uh, Lando Norris because that was certainly uh, the blame onto him the, because he passed me around on the inside and then uh, took a teeth shot. Man, I was running such a perfect race uh, and everything. Everything was going out as planned and then Lando Norris had to go and ruin it all. So it jumped out a little bit and then back out of the throttle again. We're and we're already into our pit window so far after 17 of 70 laps. Wow, and look at Felipe Drogovic, my teammate. He's trying to, put, he's trying to get around uh, Lando Norris for P2.
We're going to wait until Lando Norris goes into the pits. We're not going to be pitting right now until he does. Stoppin and Ricardo are now uh, both into the pits uh, with, the, with those mediums, but uh, me and me and the Norse and uh, Dugovic are still out there. That puts Russell and Verstappen into um, fourth and fifth place. Well, Russell came in on lap 11. He's going to have much more weaker tires uh, than we do. We could stay in our position because uh, Russell is about 23 seconds and they are coming. Norris is coming into the pits. And so is my teammate, Felipe Dragovic. Drug of it, they're both going to take tires. Coming into the pits.
already went down to second place after the cycle of pit stops, but we should be able to catch him. I'm the fastest lap. Look at that. Minute 18.994. And I pass Lionel Norris once again and I take over the lead and retain it. Already up to 25 with 70 laps. We are now leading this race with six car lengths ahead of Lando Norris. This is very competitive, nice action-packed racing here at the Hungary Round Prix. And with the three fastest cars out there here at the uh, Hungarian Grand Prix, me, Norris, and Bergevich. teammate Daniel Ricardo just got around uh, George Russell.
we're not very far from going into lap traffic. So winning a competitive race, and all three of us, are, we're the only three fastest cars out there. And in fourth place is 6.4 seconds of Max Verstappen. He could be solidly in fourth place at, uh, during the end of this thing, and same with Daniel Ricciardo. I still can't believe last weekend when I went to uh, Texas Motor Speedway that uh, I was watching WrestleMania and uh, Roman Reigns still retains the title. And there expected to be uh, several uh, new uh, covers coming in, uh, possibly on UFC and, uh, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Mandy Rose comes back. I think there is a possibility that she may come back and go to SmackDown. If we can keep this fight uh, this steadily uh, throughout this race without making a mistake or going off uh, the apron a little bit, we will we'll have a chance to win this race. And we don't have to pit until uh, until with 12 laps to go. That will be uh, lap 58. And you see, these tires are going to wear down and fall, fall away a little bit because that'll be our next setup. key thing that uh, will make us pull away is traffic. Me and uh, Leno Norris slipped through the, uh, the lap traffic, but not Felipe Drugovich. He, he lost a lot of ground.
And then a good job. But Lando Norris made a mistake coming into to the inside. I didn't want to get bumped again. I got bumped a little bit, but this time he didn't break my wing. And now Felipe Grunovic now moves up into second place. There was some bumping and banging going on between me and Dragovich, and now it's 1 2 for the Team Day Photonics. Been to pull the gap a little bit on the, my teammate Felipe Dragovic. Now we're 1 2. First time we've had a 1 2 in a long while. And now the safety car has been deployed.
and me and Lindell Norris have both had severe collisions. And the first safety car came out because Felipe Drogovic made contact with me and then uh, they tried to spin me out. And I can't believe me and Norris have both uh, received a five-second penalty for making a collision with the complete big drug event. Well, so glad everything in my components, uh, man, but that was a nasty, uh, nasty collision right there.
How can it be a five-second penalty? Because we didn't even make collision at all with Norris or, uh, or my teammate Felipe Drugovich. Drugovich made contact with me. Take over the lead away from Lando Norris. Well, hopefully we don't have any more safety car and try to uh, regain our uh, five-second advantage. We're after 40 or 70 laps. We have 30 laps to go, but we need to make a uh, five-second advantage of so or otherwise Max Verstappen is going to be the winner. That's the second time we had a collision in this race. The first collision was very unavoidable and then, and then unavoidable for our teammate. Well, I don't know why my teammate had to make the wise decision. To, well, because he had a broken wing and everything, and he had to change tires. And he already used up the, uh, the soft tires, so his next soft tires are going to be used. Well, I spun out coming out of the left turn, and then... Uh, it was on the final two corners, and then he uh, suddenly uh, spun me out.
and this is the first time I have ever had a largeable lead right now over uh, Lando Norris. And this is the largest lead that I've gotten here at the uh, Hungary Grand Prix. Two seconds right now. It's just trying to make some ground up. And it looks like Dragovich adjusted my car a little bit, and, and now I'm pulling away from uh, Lando Norris.
glad to be on their third year. Now, um, Lando Norris and Verstappen are beginning to pull away. I think my teammate Dragovic is going to uh, move up one position. He's even fighting each other on, and they're still doing it. about 4.3 seconds now. We are now officially in third place. When we make it into the first corner, we should officially be in first place. And I believe Dragovic is getting faster. He is 5.2 seconds now. He just got in the round, Felipe Dragovic. officially now in the lead here in the Hungary Grand Prix with that five second penalty.
50 of 70 laps, we have 20 laps remaining, and one more pit stop to, to go. We're going to wait for uh, Norris to come into the pits. We've got a 5.5 second advantage over him. We should be able to keep it at a steady pace and then try to win this uh, Hungary Grand Prix. Back to stopping is in third, but it's for 7.0 seconds of the, if we both serve penalties. Well, we're going to have to It's kind of a very uh, quick, little crazy eventful race here. Well, the first time uh, we spun out, and then the second time we spun out by our teammate, and then uh, the, me and Norris both got that serve about five second penalty. We are doing a terrific job. This is the best season I've ever had. Uh, this kind of an eventful performance uh, at the Hungary Grand Prix. I said last season, uh, after that fourth place finish here, we're going to come back next season. And I predicted it very well that we were going to do uh, get revenge here at the Hungary Grand Prix.
Well, is anybody going to be pinning on lap 55? Well, they could stop earlier, but we wanted to decide to pin within 12 laps remaining in the Hungary round three. Let's take a look. Lando Norris uh, could be facing uh, to drop a, a lot of positions because he hasn't uh, improved his advantage well. I think he made contact with my teammate Brugovic, and that's why uh, he's kind of uh, slow a little bit. I qualified P3 uh, here at the Hungarian Green. Great job by the guys that give me a one prepared car. And it's still running uh, incredibly well. And then the last 15 laps, we have uh, remarkably have pulled away from Lando Norris. He's still running in second place uh, with a very pressuring Max Verstappen. Bergovic is still running in fourth place and he's still uh, standing on with those socks. But he's losing a lot of ground. Teammate uh, Felipe Gronovich now comes into the pits. He's going to put another set of those soft tires. Point nine ten and Norris is in the pits. So we're going to be putting on the next lap.
coming in for the last and final time with just uh, 11, with just uh, 12 laps remaining, we come into the pits. And then we have to serve that five second penalty to make the contact. And there's Verstappen and Ricardo all pitting at the same time. more than a second at the most. We're now 1.8 seconds now over our teammate. Felipe Djokovic right now is running in sixth place. So we didn't lose ground on, on that five second penalty that we had. We gained about eight seconds uh, ahead of Max Verstappen and that was good. So that penalty was was nothing. That five second penalty uh, that, that we served during the uh, safety car period with a severe collision against uh, our teammate Lando Norris and then Lando Norris made <coughs> contact with me, but we don't have any problems at all. But remember, all these other drivers have to pit as well too. And it looks like they're not stopping. But we're going to be much, much faster than them because we have a soft tires. We're going to easily get around uh, Charles Leclerc. Man, look at that whopping limit 17.196. That's almost qualifying speed level with these uh, soft tires. And we're getting about a second now ahead of uh, Lance Stoll and Pierre Gasly, and they've decided to stay out there, but they are going to be weakening by those tires. And my teammate Drogovic has just gotten around the cleric for P5.
we are getting so much ground over uh, Gasly and Max Stroll. George Russell uh, still retains the lead. pretty much start flying out there, but George Russell is getting surrounded by lap cars. I think those lap cars out there have already took stock tires. Cars are running like a minute 19, and we're running a minute 18, and we're almost uh, there. We are now caught, uh, Lance Stroll, just in a matter of uh, 2.5 seconds. Uh, we have 2.5 seconds uh, faster tires than uh, Lance Stroll, and Pierre Gasly is in second. I don't know if they're going to try to hold on because uh, uh, some of the other cars that are taking uh, <coughs> soft tires are going to take advantage. All right, let's uh, try to be very, very uh, careful not to make or ram in any contact with uh, Lance Stroll and Pierre Gasly. We should be able to get around both of them, and we do. We both get around the Lance Stroll and Pierre Gasly, and we move up into P2. With just about six and a half laps remaining in the uh, Hungarian Grand Prix. So surprised here in this race in episode number 79, we have no cars out of the race. George Russell is still battling out with that uh, lap car Aston Martin. It looks to be Valtteri Bottas. And we're easily to the Gaining a lot of ground over George Russell. Meanwhile, my teammate Felipe Drugovich wants to get around Lance Stroll. That is Bopez. He is not having a good day at all. He is dead last in this race in the Aston Martin. Oh, we may have a car out of the race. Is that Esteban Ocon or is that El Chico, Sergio Perez? I think it is Sergio Perez. That is not going to be another dismal DNF for the El Chico. Yep, that is Perez. He is out of the race. What a tough break for the Red Bull. Now the battle for the lead. It is now shrank down to 1.2 seconds now behind Russell.
Well, that's for the retired Sergio Perez, a blown engine, and that was our first uh, DNF in the race. And this entire race uh, at the Hungarian Grand Prix, and Sergio Perez did not make it to the finish within four laps remaining. Within about the, now we have four laps to go, and we're trying to take the lead away from the George Russell, and just that quickly we do. Pulled away from our teammate Felipe Jordanovich, and now we're uh, now he's in third place. So Pierre uh, Gasly now loses positions. I don't know if Jordanovich is going to take uh, P2 away, so we can make it our uh, seventh uh, one-two finish of the season. The teammate Drogovic did get around uh, Pierre Gasly. He's about maybe three seconds, and he probably will make it. But we only got about three laps remaining, and time is running out for uh, Felipe Drogovic to get that run of up finish. As we come down the line within three laps remaining in the Hungary Grand Prix, time to look for my first win in the Hungary Grand Prix in a while. I haven't won here in the past. Uh, Six seasons, and I'm finally going to try to get one. Well, I guess Lando Norris's penalty, but it was really much far worse uh, than, than than my penalty. My penalty, I just still uh, stayed in the lead. Two more laps to go. Teammate Gregovic is about two seconds. Can he still make it? With two laps remaining in the Hungary Grand Prix. I'm on my way getting my first win in the Hungary Grand Prix, and this will be my seventh win of the season. Well, I haven't won since the Canadian Grand Prix, and Lando Norris's win streak is about to come to an end. He won two races in a row in the two previous races. He won his... Uh, he won his home in his first career win. That was the biggest uh, win of his homecoming career, winning the British Crown Prix, winning that second Crown Jewel race, and then he won the previous race at the uh, Austrian Grand Prix. But the race belongs uh, to the Team Japotronics at the Hungary Grand Prix. We come down to the line with one final lap to go. This is it, the white flag. One more lap remaining in the Hungary Grand Prix. This was a great setup that we made uh, for this race. It was a lot faster. Look at that time, uh, minute 17.196. Bugovic is out 1.2 seconds. He's closing in on George Russell. Can he try to get the two away from him to make it a one-two finish? I'm coming around for the final time at the Hungarian ring. It was a little bit of an eventful race. 
On lap 19, we made contact with Lando Norris. I had the flashback on that one. That was my only flashback of the race because of Lando Norris uh, unsportsmanlike contact. And then we had another unsportsmanlike contact from our teammate, Dragovic, then brought in the safety car. And then I had a five-second penalty with a severe collision. But it didn't matter for me because I still hold on to the lead because Verstappen and everybody else made pit stops. And then I beat Dragovic uh, right across the line. Here we go with the checkered flag coming out, and we are going to win the Hungary Grand Prix. And it's my first win in the further Hungary Grand Prix in a long while. And it's so great to win here at the, the Hungarian Ring once again. Great job, guys. Gave me a well prepared and increased downforce of this car. And we win it in dramatic style. Good job. Well, not enough for Felipe Dragovic to get the runner-up spot to make it a 1-2 finish, but it was a first and third place finish for the Team J-Poltronics. Incredible racing, and, the, and then finally I win the Hungarian Grand Prix. It took me four seasons to do it, but we know what we were doing. And, the, and a tremendous uh, improvement in qualifying, starting in P3, and then having a good performance so that during the race. A couple of contacts there, but uh, we held it on. What a ride. Then six seasons, and then I get the uh, get that funk off my back here at the Hung Hungarian ring that I struggle so much here. But I didn't struggle anything uh, today. In incredible racing, and then we're going to get some a huge amount of current tier points as well. That means we'll be able to release uh, more cars and then uh, more figures. No, I've had this one for about four years. Still works. I've had this headphone for, for, for almost five years now and it still works. Yeah, I'll close it. 
So incredible racing it, it was. And you know, this has been six seasons that I haven't won here at the Hungary Grand Prix, but I finally get it. And, and I told you last season, I predicted that I was going to win here, and we for sure did. We, we did it in the Batic style with about 4.6 seconds over George Russell. It looks to be that uh, Lando Norris had a uh, wing contact with somebody. Uh, when he earned that five-second penalty, he was in sixth place, and then he had wing damage, and then he had to go over and pit again. And he had a minute 17.085, so he gets two points out of that one, but uh, he loses a lot of ground with wing contact. Let's take a look at the, uh, the race director uh, for the incidents uh, that we've had. Now, when we did this under a two-stop strategy, uh, we changed in the same mediums and then, <coughs> then changed over into the softs, and then we had enough uh, to win the race. Now, this is what, ha what happened to me and, uh, and Dragovich. You know, Lando Norris made severe collision with me with that five-second penalty, and then Valtteri Botez ignored blue flags. He had a five-second penalty as well. And then Dragovich had a collision with me. Uh, so already twice I had uh, two collisions. And then Robert Schwarzman made a collision with Lando Norris on lap 60. That put Lando Norris in into the pits and, and then dropped him into the top 10. And then uh, then the mechanical failure for Sergio Perez on lap 65. But it was great racing it was. And, uh, and that penalty... Um, you know, we, we lost about five seconds uh, on that penalty, but we made a two-second pit stop and still held on to the lead. And then we were over Felipe Drogovic, and, and we won it in dramatic style. Great job by the guys. And now we're going to do the highlights to upload a photo for episode number 75 in this very eventful, uh, very prestigious win here at the Hungary Grand Prix. Man, take a look at this tremendous start of the race. Man, clean passing and, and a good job by Drogovic. Um, just letting me go by. See, uh, Drogovic knew that I was coming by there, and, and that was great team effort. Then I left, uh, and, you know, in the first 40 laps of the race, uh, the, the, this was a great battle for 1-2-3 for me, Norris, and Dragovic. And then after that safety car, we just uh, tremendously just pulled away from the field. Because after the field uh, was losing ground, then, uh, man, it happened on lap 34. And then Dragovic just kept on going, and then suddenly uh, had wing damage. And here was the battle for the lead and for the win, beating out uh, George Russell. Because George Russell had the very weak uh, medium tires, and we were ramming right close to him. We were running three seconds uh, faster than uh, George Russell's uh, worn out of medium tires. It was the pass, and it was within about four laps remaining. And we passed him right on the outside very cleanly, and then made it into the first corner, and then uh, four seconds ahead, the victory. And then here's the, uh, the great win. Wow, look how close Felipe Dragovic was. He was right on the nose of uh, George Russell. If he'd taken another lap, he, he would have gotten second place, but George Russell held on to get the P2 spot over uh, Felipe Dragovic, so that was the best racing of the season for George Russell. Let's take a look at the standings. See how it progressed here as Orlando Norris so loses ground, only gains, only got two points out of that one, while I won the race within 291 points to get my seventh win of the season. And Felipe Dragovic is about 63 points ahead. 
Lando Norris is in, still in third place with 179. Max Verstappen uh, gains ground in four. And George Russell with that impressive second place finish, his best run of the season, goes into the top five. And that still uh, will give us a commanding lead in the uh, manufacturers as uh, we have now 519 points with about eight uh, races remaining in the season four of our Formula One schedule. And our next race will be for episode number 80 at the Belgian Grand Prix at the largest uh, Oh, largest um, road course in Formula One. That is the largest circuit in Formula One is the Belgium Grand Prix at the Spa Frankel Champ. So we're going to have a long break uh, coming up, and we're definitely going to need it. And we beat out our rivalry, uh, George Russell, who finished in second place, and he did a great job uh, in the Hungary Grand Prix. You know, he should have been driver today rather than Charles Leclerc. Well, now that we have the season break coming up for the uh, Belgian Grand Prix, now let's, let's take a look at our stats. We still uh, have the build time uh, not set yet. Well, McLaren is taking advantage, and you know that that boost of advantage. That's why they won the. Uh, that's why Lando Norris has had advantage uh, in the British Grand Prix and the Austrian Grand Prix, and now uh, we take advantage here and we get our first win here at the. Uh, well, Hungary Grand Prix, it took four seasons to do it, but we finally uh, stepped it away and got it back on top again. So we have won uh, Saudi Arabia, we won China, then the U.S. Miami Grand Prix, the Spanish Grand Prix, Monaco, that was five wins, then, and then our sixth win in the Canadian Grand Prix, and then a couple of runner-up finishes, and now we finally got a win at the Hungary Grand Prix. So we've already won the Belgian Grand Prix two or three times, and that will be our next episode, number 80, with eight races remaining in the Season 4 schedule. And the Belgian Grand Prix will be next. So a great job it was at the uh, Hungary Grand Prix, finally getting a win there. And now we have plenty of uh, library cars, so, and we'll have a very special library car for the Belgian Grand Prix. I think we could go... Uh, I think we can go with the Sharp Edge car uh, for this race, too.
let's see which sticker can we use for the um, Belgian Grand Prix. Hmm. Well, I think we use this one. And we promised we said that we were going to go with an Easter color. I think we're going to do that. Um, we have a new um, we have new flex poses, but I'm not going to use them yet. I really don't like that one too much. All right, so that's going to be our next uh, library car for the next race in episode number 80 of our Formula One MIT J. Bocorino. We we'll finally get our first win here at the uh, Hungary Grand Prix, and it was an incredible job, our seventh win of the season, but we got to keep it going within eight races remaining in our Formula One schedule. And that gives us a very good cushion in the lead over Felipe Targovic. Tremendous job by the, the, by the guys and crew and everything. We've got the season break coming up uh, here, and... Uh, and then we'll do all the rest of the uh, and the rest of the setups of, uh, to get prepared for the uh, Hungary, I mean the Belgian Grand Prix. Well, that's going to do it for our Formula One coverage. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and it was a great race, even though we had uh, two little miscues out there. But uh, it, it was unexpectedly not our fault; it was their fault. And, and spinning out a little bit, and then recovering, and then right after uh, the safety car, we pulled away and uh, had a commanding lead in the last six laps of the race and then it was and then also a great ending of trying to manage the, uh, the pit stop and then we were running a hell of a lot faster uh, than everyone in the uh, in the medium tires hopefully we'll do the same thing uh, in the next race but but now that race is not going to be uh, you know quite as uh, intense as it was uh, in, in Hungary because uh, it will be 44 laps of racing in the Belgian Grand Prix Thanks everyone for watching on our Formula One My Team Tape for Forever. The next race will be Formula One Manager. We have two races remaining. We have the Brazilian Grand Prix and the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. I think that's episode number 43 for the uh, Formula One Manager for Forever. And then we'll go back to Formula 122 My Team Tape for Forever to get prepared to race here for the Belgian Grand Prix. See you everyone. Have a nice evening. Be sure to link subscribe to my channel, twitch.tv slash and youtube.com slash 3 So long everyone. Have a good night.